Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Boundaries. And these episodes are going to get a little bit longer from now on. You find me in this one in Sheffield City Centre. Now you will be quite amazed to learn that a lot of people don't know that Sheffield, even though it's a city, does have a cathedral. Locals know it obviously, you would be surprised how many people don't know it otherwise. I'm stood outside the cathedral, so we're going to have a little chat about this, but then also a chat about something that you can catch right outside it, and that's a tram. This is Sheffield Cathedral, or as some people know it, the Church of St Peter and St Paul. It was originally Sheffield's parish church and became a cathedral in 1914. The cathedral is one of five Grade 1 listed buildings in the city of Sheffield. The others are the Town Hall, Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet and the parish churches at Ecclesfield and Bradfield. It's located on Church Street, close to the northern end of Fargate. The oldest part of it dates back to around the year 1200, and its newest part was completed in 1966. It has an unusual mixture of medieval and modern architecture. The shaft of the 9th century Sheffield Cross, which is now in the British Museum, is believed to have been sited here. In what's known as the Shrewsbury Chapel is an alabaster monument to George Talbot, the 6th Earl of Shrewsbury who was married to Elizabeth Talbot, who we know better as Bess of Hardwick. To its immediate east is this statue of Scottish poet James Montgomery, who from 1835 until his death lived on Glossop Road. He's buried in Sheffield General Cemetery. The cathedral is the base of a charity called the Archer Project, founded in 1989 following rising homelessness in the city thanks to the collapse of local steelworks and coal mining industries. The rooms they use were destroyed by a fire in an arson attack in 2020. Some £22,000 was raised for the charity within 24 hours of the fire, including a sum from Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. There are 12 bells here, which are rung regularly for practice on Thursday and for Sunday services, in the morning and in the evening. The ship's bell from HMS Sheffield is also hung within the building. The cathedral also has its own stop on the Sheffield Super Tram Network, one of three city centre tram stops served by all four lines. This can be accessed from any other stop on the network. The Super Tram has been operational since 1994 and this stop, Cathedral, was opened on the 17th of February 1995, making it one of the oldest of its 50 stops. Trams in Sheffield are nothing new. The city used to have an extensive tram network called the Sheffield Tramway, which operated from 1873 until 1960, closing in favour of buses. The modern network consists of four colour-coded lines, blue, purple, yellow and black, which connect with local and national bus and rail services and six park and ride sites. This tram in shop now is a yellow line tram. The yellow line runs from Middlewood in the west to the Meadowhall shopping centre in the east, taking in places like Hillsborough on the way. Going the other way here is a blue line tram, the blue line is the longest line, running from Malin Bridge to Halfway. This is the one you'd need for Sheffield Station and for Crystal Peaks. The purple line is the shortest and mostly follows the route of the blue line, running through Sheffield Station to Manor Top, before diverging at Gleadless Town End to Herdings Park. 25 of the trams used on the network were built in 1992 by the German company Siemens Duwag, based in Dusseldorf. As of May 2020, all 25 of them remain operational. However, there is another kind of tram used on the network these days, the Stadler CityLink Class 399. There are seven of these, which are only used on the Black Line, or the tram train route as it's known. 
The tram train runs to Rotherham Parkgate, mostly following the route of the Yellow Line before continuing to Rotherham via a network rail line from Tinsley onwards. This means part of its route is shared with mainline trains. This is currently the only tram train service in the UK, although it will be joined by Cardiff South Wales Metro later this year. Here's what the interior of a Stadler CityLink Class 399 looks like. These trams are much narrower than the Siemens Duwag trams and somehow feel a bit less crowded. So let's go for a ride to Rotherham Parkgate and see what we can spot out of the windows. This is Castle Square. This and Fitzallen Square are the only other stops served by all four lines. Once past Fitzallen Square, trams head over the Park Square Bridge to a major tram junction. It's located next to the Ponds Forge Leisure Centre and has many pedestrian bridges. At ground level, Park Square is a major roundabout where the Sheffield Parkway begins. That's the road you can see here. Many motorists use that to access the M1 at Junction 33. Look to the left and you'll see Victoria Keys, built between 1816 and 1819 as the terminus of the Sheffield Canal. It includes former coal yards of the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway. Next we pass Nunnery Square, which is where the Supertram Depot is located. This occupies former carriage sidings alongside the Sheffield to Lincoln Railway Line. Hiding away behind those trees is the Sheffield Arena. Opened in 1991, it's used for concerts and sporting events. It's where the Sheffield Steelers Ice Hockey Club play their home games. It's not long before we hit Carbrook and Sheffield's IKEA store, which opened in 2017. The store was the 20th IKEA opened in the UK and led to the creation of 480 new local jobs. We've now reached Meadowhall, the 11th largest shopping centre in the UK. It was opened in 1990 and at the time it was the second largest. It has around 280 stores. This is where the tram train now diverges from the Yellow Line route, taking it under the impressive Tinsley Viaduct, a two-tier road bridge which carries the M1 on its upper deck. We're now on the main network rail track into Rotherham. If we'd been here before 2008, you'd be seeing the Tinsley Towers, or Salt and Pepper at this point, a now demolished power station. At Rotherham Central Station, there's a rather unusual setup as far as the platforms go. Because this is the main rail network, the station had to be extended to accommodate for trams. Rotherham Central. Tram passengers board on a small platform at the end of the conventional station platform, which is of course a slightly different height. It always feels a little bit weird this bit to me. This is the... And finally we arrive at Parkgate Shopping Centre, or Retail World as many Rotherham locals know it. This is the end of the line, less than half an hour from this Cathedral. And here we are back at Parkgate. End to end, that took me about an hour and a half to travel via tram into Sheffield and then back again and obviously do all the recording around the cathedral and the tram stop. The tram train, it's well worth trying out if you've never used it before. And uh, here at Parkgate, there is actually a uh, park and ride, which is over in that direction, over there. But to get to it, you have to go through the shopping park, which is what I'm about to do right now. And there you have it. That's Sheffield Cathedral and the Super Tram and the Tram Train. If you've never been to this part of the world, I uh, strongly recommend you do. And try it all out and go and see the sights of Rotherham and Sheffield. <laughs> I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been Beyond the Boundaries, and I'm out.